Magritte's uh, The Treachery of Images from 1929, or also called N'est pas un pipe. This is not a pipe. Okay, so, but it's a hilarious painting. <laughs> it is hilarious. It's an incredibly real painting well, of a pipe. Magritte paints in this incredibly wonderful, matter of fact, kind of absolutely mundane, illustrative style. Yes, like he was illustrating a, a catalog. And with the words underneath, it's as if you're looking at one of the flashcards you would have as a child. Right, that would, would say, say pipe, and but it's a, this is right. not a pipe. That's right. <laughs> and of course, he's right. It's not a pipe. It's, a, it's, it a, it's a painting a of a pipe. pipe. But it is a pipe. Where is the authority? Do we believe what we're seeing in the veracity of the illustration, the sort of perfect representation of the almost platonic pipe? It's the or pipe. It's the or pipe, yes. right, exactly. Or do we believe the text underneath, which tells us it's not a pipe? Which is stronger, the representation of the thing or the language that denies it? For me? Yeah, for you. The picture of the pipe. The picture of the pipe is yes. more powerful than the language. Yes. That's so interesting because I think for most, and maybe that's because you're an art historian and you just maybe love. Maybe that's why I became an art historian. <laughs> maybe so. I believe whatever I see. Because so many people believe what they read and in a sense I think the language has a kind of authority. But for me there's this sort of perfect almost balance and struggle between the two uh -huh. where I just absolutely accept that pipe. It is it's there, it's this pipe, it's this perfect representation of a pipe. And the language is completely denying it and has tremendous authority as well. And it's this fantastic tension between that presentation and then that rejection of the presentation. And then of course there's the word pipe, which is in a way just as much of an abstraction from the actual item uh, of the pipe. Okay, so the, right? so the representation of the pipe is twofold. There's the representation of the pipe as an image, as an image, this iconic. And then there's the word. Oh, so this linguistic symbol. Yeah. Right, and they're both not a pipe. They're both not a pipe. That's right. They're right. both actually ways of representing a pipe or our notion of what that pipe is in somebody's mouth somewhere. What else could this be a picture of? Well, it's, it's a picture of it is a pipe. So it is. It's so like, you're, so it's you're like denying they occupy the, text. the same area. They're both in the painting. Yeah. Okay, so when Magritte paints this, he's clearly challenging this notion of authority and, and which and what, and it's really playful. And also, it's just challenging the whole illusionistic history of Western art, right? No question about it. Okay. And he's doing it again with, with a kind of faux naturalism, right? right? right. With this kind of self-conscious naturalism, right. which right. really sort of transcends naturalism. In, the, in, in its sort of self-reference. Perfectly painted and modeled. But also pipe. perfectly written text. It because is. Because the script is, is again the kind of didactic right. script that you would find in a kindergarten right. classroom, right. right? Which is really meant to be instructive and meant to be full of authority. Right. And so this is a painting really about the denial of authorities of language and I representation, guess so. isn't you know, it? I remember when my daughter was really little and I woke up every morning and she looked at books of pictures just like this one. That's right. And then pointed, and I had to give her the names for and things. And you could have really screwed her up by giving her a book Pipe. which said, yeah. this is not, not a, a pipe. <laughs>